This is Scott and Susan Hollywood, who had an interesting start to their relationship. I had an instant crush on her the minute that I saw her. One day I was walking out of the library and she looked at me and she said, hey, who are you going to win a ball with? And I told her, and then she got this smile on her face and she started to walk away and I said, wait, why did you ask? And she said, well, I was gonna ask you. So I told her, I said, wait here and she waited in the hallway and I walked back in and I told the other girl that I couldn't go with her and I walked back out and I said now you can ask me on February 7th 1998 Scott and Susan welcomed their only child Zach into their lives it didn't take long to latch on to his mom Anything that I ever wanted, I always went to my mom first. Zachary was definitely a mama's boy, so he could get away with a lot more from his mother than he could from me, certainly. <laughs> they only shipped one. At Bradley Bourbonnet Community High School, Zach played all four years on the varsity team and was cheered on by his biggest fan. There was times where my dad thought that she was going to get kicked out of the game. She was more fiery as a fan than my dad. After his senior season, Ball State took notice of Zach and his mom was in full support. They knew that she was, she was going to be that mom that was always there at the games and being really loud. She told me, work as hard as you can. She told me she loved me, and she told me she would see me in a month. I was texting her, and I asked her like a question. She told me to ask my dad because she wasn't feeling well. And I said, well, like, what, like, what does that mean? Like, why aren't, like, are you, like, really sick, or are you, like, just have a cold? And she was like, she said that she was in the hospital getting IVs and stuff like that. And then, like, everything was fine, and then I called my dad. And he said that she was back in the hospital again. And that's kind of when I realized, like, the, something really isn't right here. 20 years ago, Susan was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, an inflammatory bowel disease that causes complications to her colon. To this point, none of her flare-ups had been severe. It's an input-output disease, so as you eat, obviously you digest what you eat, and that's when you start to have problems. So what she would do is, is she would minimize the intake, because then the output, there isn't as much problem. Well, when you do that, you lose a lot of weight. What happens is, is then you start to get compliments based upon how you're looking when you're actually doing the reverse of what you should be doing. I had two family members that were coming over and sitting with her at different times of the day as I worked. I got a call from that family member that had been sitting with her that day. She told me that Susie wasn't doing very good that day and her mindset wasn't, wasn't where it should be. I decided to come home from work right away when I heard that. I looked at her twin sister first and her twin sister shook her head no. And then I looked at my wife and I never saw that look on her face once in 32 years. I said, what's wrong? And she told me that she thought she was dying. I walked into the emergency room and my aunt came up to me and said like, you can go in there if you want, just like be prepared. I'm thinking like, you know, what does that mean? Like that's my mom in there. She could communicate with her eyes really well and like with her hands and so she kept like looking at me and my dad and we we're like, like, what do you want? And she went like this. 
And we're like, do you want to, do you want to like write us something? So we got her a piece of paper and she just started writing stuff. And she wrote to me something that she always told me that dad loves you as much as I love you. I went into a room, the most beautiful room in the hospital. And it's a room that oversees the skyline of Chicago. And they sat down and they explained to me what they felt they needed to do for her. And it was um, five surgeries. And going through the progression of them telling me everything that needed to be done, I got to the point where I just simply asked one question every time. What's their chance of survival? And by the time you got to the third surgery, it was next to nothing. I came home and I saw him crying in his bed and I just went up to him and just laid with him. That was the first time I saw my dad cry. That's really the moment that hit me that there's a lot going on and he doesn't know how to fix it and he he knows that there's a real problem here. I had had a very, very personal conversation with her, letting her know that it was okay. And then I went and told Zachary. He said to me like really softly, he said, you need to go in there because it's time. And so I went in there and I instantly grabbed her hand and I didn't want to let go of it. For like five minutes, it was just me and her. I didn't say a word, I just sat there with her. I was just waiting for her to breathe again and her chest to go up again. And, you know, it never did. I went up and gave my mom a kiss, just like we had did when I was little before I went to bed, and told her I loved her. In the hospital, I talked to my mom and I talked to her about what I want to major in. And I asked her if I would be a good teacher and she nodded her head yes. And I said, well, I'm thinking about um, becoming a special education teacher. And she nodded her head yes again. And that's when I really made the decision that that's what I was going to pursue as my major. The person I connect with the most when I go back home is my high school head coach's son, Sam Renshin. Me and him, we always get ice cream together. We like we always play games like uh, like Uno. Oh, draw four, Zach. That's me. <laughs> yeah, draw oh, four, yeah. Zach. Let's <laughs> all eat. He's so energetic. I was and just wild, and I love it. Yo. Oh, you, you, you did not do that. <laughs> Two, three. All right. Can I do that? Okay. Look at that. It's an Yeah, don't be jealous about me. Everyone has their problems and everyone has battles that people fight within themselves that they might not tell anyone. When I feel pain, I just think about all the pain that my mom felt and how much she still fought to try to make it through it. And there's no pain that I can feel that I can't push myself through. I just feel her presence with me all the time and I know she's up there watching me. I just use that as motivation that I'm just trying to make her proud.